What is up, Flav City family? It is Art and Bobby coming at you in the kitchen for a video about the top 10 essential things all home cooks need in the kitchen. I'm talking about essential cookware. I'm talking about essential pantry stuff. And this is really narrowed down to bare bone stuff you need to rock healthy, delicious recipes at home. Because there's a couple of things I don't like to do. Stock my kitchen with stuff I don't need and buy the most expensive stuff when it turns out you didn't need to do that anyway. So I kind of have an eclectic mix in my kitchen. And we live in a two bedroom condo here in Chicago, so space is minimal. And I think I've gotten it down to a science of the stuff you really need, the stuff you don't need, and why you wanna get the certain things I'm gonna talk about. So this video is for all the home cooks out there. Before we get rocking and rolling, like, subscribe, share. The only way this channel keeps growing, the only way we help home cooks and people buy the best stuff to cook in and put the best stuff in their body is by you spreading that Flav City love. We got a bell icon below the video. You're gonna wanna enable all notifications because we have like six videos going live every day uh, every day, every week, uh, Art's like, what do we do? Uh, three of those videos are live stream cooking demos where we make a recipe from start to finish. You don't wanna miss out and you don't wanna miss out on Thrive Market. They've been sponsoring my channel going on four, five years now. Everything you normally get at the grocery store, all your favorite organic, keto, paleo, dairy-free, non-GMO items are on Thrive Market cheaper than the grocery store. Per order, you save $32 uh, compared to going to the grocery store. And in case you don't wanna leave the house, the box comes to your house. It's fantastic. And right now, Thrive Market has what I'm considering the best quality pasture-raised chicken in the entire country on their website, and it's also a October sale. Um, it's from Cook's Venture in Arkansas. It is the tastiest, most high quality chicken I've literally ever had, and I've had a lot of pasture-raised chicken. They also have Patri Essentials we're gonna talk about, and uh, Flav City family members get a free gift up to $24 when you check out Thrive Market in my link down below. I love them, I think you're gonna love them too, so check them out. Okay, let's start with essential kitchenware for home cooks. I'm gonna go with pans. We did a whole video recently about non-stick pans and the comparison of traditional versus ceramic. And by the way, I keep the uh, napkin in there so the pans don't scratch each other. Watch that video when we're done. But in my opinion, you wanna get this. This is a ceramic pan. Instead of the traditional Teflon in there, it's made of ceramic, which is essentially sand. The gist of that video and the gist of why I like these is because Teflon, in my opinion, is not something you really wanna cook with. I just don't think it's safe for everyday use because the active ingredient in Teflon is PTFE, that's the chemical. If you overheat your pans, or if you happen to scratch your pans, the surface, those chemicals can leach into your food. And so while technically Teflon is a superior nonstick surface, you're gonna wanna go with ceramic because ceramic is completely safe and you want to get a good quality ceramic. I see all these commercials for like those copper pans and those annoying people who swirl the eggs around in the pan. Those are low quality ceramic, meaning the um, nonstick surface is going to go away very quickly and it doesn't last long. And more importantly, it's very, uh, it's very rare to see a ceramic pan that has stainless steel on the outside and a very thick inner aluminum core. This one does, meaning it heats up evenly and you don't have hot spots. It retains that heat and distributes it very evenly. Um, the only knock against ceramic is that you can't put it over super high heat. So I never go above medium, medium high. Otherwise the pan could get hot and you could burn your, uh, your ingredients in the pan. But for my money and for my family's health safety, I wanna go with ceramic pans. Oh, by the way, I have all my kitchen gear on my Amazon shop page. I put it out there just for you guys. I earn like a 2% commission, but that link is down below. Um, I recommend getting a 12 inch one for large stuff like stir fries, sautés, and an eight inch one for uh, eggs and omelets. But if you're on a severe budget or you don't have a lot of room in your kitchen, go for the larger one because you can still make eggs in here. I just like this small one because I'll make a frittata that starts out on the stovetop and then chuck it in the oven at 400 degrees, which is the max temperature for this pan. Um, that's why I like to have two, but you do whatever you want. But this one by Zwilling, I'm sorry, how I pronounce it, Art? Swilling. Swilling. Art corrected me. Art corrects me like once a day because my grammar is that of a fifth, fifth grader. Uh, it's Swilling, made in Germany, super high quality. I think. <laughs> He sounds like he knows what he's talking about, so that's all that matters. You don't folks. sell the steak, you sell the sizzle. Thank you, well said. Uh, moving on to chopping, okay? A chopping block is essential. A large chopping block is more essential. You don't want a small one. Why? You want 
big real estate. This is an 18 by 24 uh, Illinois based, uh, Illinois made uh, wood cutting board from Boo's. Where are they based in Illinois? Art? Thank you. And I like that because this is about as big as they get for a home cook. And when you're chopping and prepping or meal prepping, you want a lot of real estate uh, so your food doesn't fall off. These little boards are no good. Uh, wood is really good for everything but raw meat. Raw proteins I like to do on a plastic cutting board because the odds of that leaching into the, uh, into the surface and breeding uh, bacteria are much lower. But get a large one. Uh, this is a double thick cherry one. It's super duper heavy and obviously reversible. And I put it on a nonstick uh, mat like that. You can get the single thickness, but real estate is very, very important when it comes to uh, chopping blocks. And I like this one a lot. A lot of the Food Network people use this company. Uh, John Boo's there. What I say? Thank you, Art. See, Art's on the ball. Um, another essential thing, I wasn't going to put this in the video, um, so now we're actually above 10, but I don't think anyone cares, is a $10 splatter guard because I love cooking, but I hate cleaning, and I make a mess like nobody's business, but I usually clean up with the help of Art or the help of Kara, um, but this minimizes the mess greatly because it's a screen that goes over any pan you want, over the nonstick pans, over the ceramic, over the... Uh, cast iron pans, and it prevents the oil from splattering everywhere. It's literally the best $10 you can ever get. I highly recommend getting it just to prevent a huge cleanup later on after the whole cooking process. And then I pointed to this pan right here. These are the only three pans I'm really gonna tell you to get. Get one or two ceramic pans and get a USA made cast iron pan from Art Lodge. Made in? Tennessee. Tennessee. This is what you want. I always say, if it was good enough for your grandma, it's good enough for you. This is cast iron, and it's a fantastic thing to cook either on the stovetop or in the oven. Sometimes you can start it on there and then put it in the oven. It's a little slow to warm up, uh, but once this gets going, it gets super hot. It spreads out that heat really evenly, and you don't get hot spots. Um, I have a video on how to clean it, but you never really want to clean it with soapy hot water. You just want to use um, a brush with hot water and scrape it, or salt. The salt thing doesn't work for me, or I have this thing actually that works great. It's on my Amazon store too. It's called a CM scrubber, and it's basically like a chain link kind of fence here. You put really hot water uh, from the sink in there, and you go like this, and it scratches all the residual sticky bits off of there, but it doesn't scratch or take the uh, seasoning off the pan. And then once every couple of weeks, I'll put a little drop of oil in there, uh, rub it out, put it over medium heat for about five minutes, and then let it cool and wipe out the excess oil to season it. It's a little high maintenance at the most, but this is what you really want. A cast iron pan and a, um, a nonstick ceramic, you're set. Don't let anyone talk you into cookware sets, 12 piece, 15 piece. You're not gonna use 60 to 75% of those. So just start with those right there. Now, I swear by a La Crusade. I know there's cheaper ones by Amazon, or you go to like Kohl's, you see that? They're not the same. I think Art says Cooks Illustrated has done many tests and they always rank La Crusade as one of the top, right Art? For if you feel like spending money, yes. If you feel like spending money, because this right here is about $350 to $400, but it is a lifetime investment and it's worth it. But if you don't want to spend that money, get one of these. Now, this is actually expensive too. This is $200, but it's one of those things where you pay for what you get. I believe that's a Dave Matthews song, right, Art? It is. And this is true for this one. This is an all clad stainless steel four quart uh, pot. What's great about this is that you can cook soups and stews and chilies in here. You can make sauces in here. And the construction of this pot is next level. It has many different layers of stainless steel and aluminum core, but it's very, very solid. And the reason why I tell people never get um, nonstick or ceramic pots is because what did I say about the high heat? It doesn't really perform very well with ceramic. And I like to get into here and really scrape the bottom. Imagine you're searing some like short ribs to make a little stew. You want to create fond or sticky bits. You can't really create sticky bits with nonstick surface, but you can with um, either a La Crusade, the enameled cast iron, or the uh, stainless steel. This is fantastic. I use it probably three to four times a week. It's big enough, four quarts, to make a soup for meal prep, and it's not too big. It's going to take up too much real estate. It comes with a lid. It's all clad. I highly, highly recommend it. And hey, if you want to splurge, get one of these or add it to your wedding registry list. 
uh, add it to your Christmas, your Hanukkah list. It is worth it and you're going to get it once and you're never going to have to buy it again because it really, really treats you right. It's fantastic. Okay, what next? Oh, here we go. A knife. Okay, there's a couple different knives I use, and we'll talk about sheet trays. Don't buy a knife set. It's another thing people always ask me, what knife set should I get? I don't have a knife set. This is a combination of different knives that I use on a daily basis, but there's one knife, in my opinion, and one knife only you're gonna use 95% of the time. It's an eight inch chef's knife. Now, this is my kitchen, this is my playground. I do this for a living. As Art would say, it's a write-off. This is my favorite one. This is the Shun 8-inch dual core knife. It's about $215 on Amazon, but it's amazing. It's Japanese made, super high quality. It looks good, it feels good, fantastic. But Amazon will have a $30 version similar to this. It's an 8-inch knife, very highly rated. I've tried it out before. Uh, it performs great. This is all you need, a $30 one or a $200 one. These guys make actually a $125 one that's on my Amazon shop page too. I don't care what you get. Just get an eight inch chef's knife. And I almost forgot, you have to get one of these also. This is a honing, honing steel or honing, honing blade? Honing steel. Now, this doesn't actually sharpen your knife, it straightens your knife. Meaning, when I'm chopping stuff, my knife will actually get, the blade will get crooked or bent. This, when you hone it, it's straight again. So it feels like it's sharper, but it's actually just straightening the edge. What you have to do is get these sharpened depending on how much you cook, once every three months. These are actually severely over need, uh, overdone for a, a sharpening. I can feel it. And a sharp knife is a what art? A safe knife. A safe knife, because if you have a dull blade, you're gonna put more pressure, under pressure, and you're gonna maybe have an accident and lop off a finger, go to the emergency room on a Friday night when you thought you were gonna Netflix and chill, and the whole party's over. Um, sheet trays. Now, this is my favorite sheet tray. It's made by Nordic Wear. You need one, probably two. And while I don't love cooking with and using aluminum foil with my recipes, because in my opinion, I don't think it's safe to use thin aluminum on high heat situations in the oven or on the grill. It is safe to use solid construction aluminum sheet trays because I don't want you using cheap inferior or non-stick sheet trays because those don't perform well. They're made with um, PTFE Teflon and they're bad news. This is so great and one of my secrets to actually cooking food in sheet trays is while you're preheating your oven, actually preheat the sheet tray in there too, which I did the other day when I made um, sweet potato fries on Instagram stories because when I dump the seasoned fries onto the uh, sheet tray, they start to sizzle, sizzle immediately and form that nice crust. And this can retain the heat somewhat well, but it has a nice thick aluminum uh, core here and it's great for roasting. I highly recommend those. Buy it now because what I noticed they do is they raise the price around the holidays because they know everyone needs it and the price goes up 10, 20%. Right now it's still cheap and it comes in a two pack. Okay, the last piece of essential hardware I think you need, and this is really a Flav City specific thing, but it's one of those things you need, but you just don't realize it yet. This is a microplane zester. A lot of people say I'm obsessed with zest, but this is not just good for zesting oranges, lemons, and lime. And by the way, most of the flavor in a lemon is in the um, essential oils in the skin. It's great for Parmesan cheese because it creates this snow shower. Get one of these, they're like $10. I highly recommend it because it comes in handy with a lot, a lot of things. Do you need it in the coral color? Yeah, coral actually was the color I heard of 2019. I don't know what the color of 2020 is because the Home and Houseware show was uh, canceled because of Corona and I always go to it. So if someone knows what the, the culinary kitchenware color of 2020 is, you let me know. Now, let's finish this video with three or four essential pantry items, okay? I have a bit of a stacked pantry here. Check it out, Art. You know, we got all our stuff on. Different drawers here, my oils, my salts, my vinegars, tons of spices here. I don't recommend starting that way, okay? This is what I would do. I would get a really good all-purpose cooking oil, avocado oil. I get a really great unrefined salt, like Celtic sea salt or Himalayan pink salt. And I'd get good quality pepper and a good quality secondary fat, like the Thrive Market ghee. So my favorite oils to cook with are avocado oil and the Thrive Market ghee. Avocado oil is the healthiest swap for canola oil. If you're a loyal Flav City fan, we've done 
hundreds of videos about canola, corn oil, safflower oil, sun oil, the processed plant-based oils that are highly processed, refined, and inflammatory. Avocado oil is the perfect swap for canola oil because it's high heat and it has no flavor. It's a neutral flavor. So for cooking or for marinades or salad dressings, uh, get avocado oil, but when we're done, watch my video about your buying fake avocado oil because a lot of the stuff in the store is actually either rancid or cut with inferior oils like the cruddy ones I just talked about. Chosen Food makes a great one. And this one right here, if you wanna try the most next level pasture-raised organic grass-fed ghee, get the Thrive Market one. I'm working on my own Flay City landing page, so maybe it's live by now. When you click the link down below uh, to sign up and get your free gift, make sure to add the ghee for Thrive Market. It's unbelievable and it's a healthy saturated fat because it's pasture raised and grass fed. These are the two fats you really only need. After that, you can go on to extra virgin olive oil, you can go on to other ones, but just start with that, keep it basic. Salt. We've talked about salt before, but the typical salt that I used, to be honest, up until two years ago was this. And I think most people use some kind of kosher salt, either from Morton or Diamond Crystal. Put this down, and when you go to Thrive Market, put a bag of this. This is the Celtic Sea Salt Kosher Salt, or you can get the Celtic Sea Salt Fine Salt. There's a huge difference between unrefined salts like Celtic or Himalayan pink salt and this kind of salt. Most people don't realize that these kinds of salts are bleached, processed, refined, and have anti-caking agents in here so they pour out really, really quickly. The problem is when you actually bleach it and get rid of all the minerals up to 80 or so minerals like in the Celtic, you get rid of the nuanced flavor notes and pure sodium chloride actually spikes your blood pressure more than unrefined salt. So it's actually worse for you and worse tasting. When you get something like this, you can actually see in the salt here, it has tons of minerals in there that don't spike your blood pressure and offer really subtle flavor notes to your cooking. So I tell people, change your culinary game so easily just by swapping out the salt. So try Celtic sea salt, either uh, gourmet kosher or the fine sea salt. Uh, this one right here, it's great for cooking or for finishing. That could be the easiest thing you do that changes your cooking game. And then for black pepper, please never buy pre-ground black pepper because there's volatile essential oils in the... Um, in the peppercorn here that when you crack it or grind it, it starts to go downhill. You want to get whole uh, peppercorns and then grind it yourself or buy one of these little pepper grinders or salt grinders that has peppercorns in there and grind as needed. And I think that's it. I mean, obviously we can go more and more. And if you check out my Amazon shop page for all the kitchen gear, it'll have it in case you're there, but I want to start bare bones, right? This is really what I think you need to make any recipe you want without over cluttering, without buying stuff you don't need, because I hate to do that. So um, that's it. I hope you guys found that helpful. Watch the video about uh, the full review of ceramic pans. Watch the video about uh, avocado oil, fake olive oil, and please try out Thrive Market. They've been supporting the channel for four and a half years now. We love to show them some love because they have some of the best stuff at the grocery store, cheaper, and uh, Flav City fans get that free gift when they use my link down below, and it's 30 days risk-free, so there's nothing to worry about. Uh, like, subscribe, share. The only reason we make these videos is to help you guys out and to help you guys put the best quality stuff in your body. If you want to see more kitchen stuff like this, just let Art and I know. Uh, we love making these videos, but uh, we have two more videos below us right now. But for my man Art and I, we leave you like we always do. Hashtag keep on cooking, mad love, and peace. Later, fam.